Naomba ufungue Biblia yako sasa. You may now open your Bible. Katika kitabu cha Mathali sura ya kwanza. The book of Matthew chapter 1. Mstari wa 33. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 3. Methali sura ya kwanza msari wa 33. Proverb chapter 1 verse 33. Biblia nasema bali kila anisikilizaye atakaa salama. The Bible says whoever listens to me will be living safe. Naye atatulia bila kuogopa mabaya. And it will be easy without fearing anything. Mungu anajua yako mabaya duniani. God knows that there is bad things or harm in the world. Ziko changamoto mbalimbali duniani. There is some challenges under the sun. Lakini Biblia inasema, But the Bible says, kila anisikilizaye. Whoever listens to me, hapa hajataja cheo cha mtu. He did not mention any position of a human being. Hapa anataja kiumbe chake ambayo ni mwanadamu. Here he's mention his own people that is human beings. Yeyote ambaye atatambua kwamba anapaswa kumsikiliza Mungu. Whoever gonna understand that he must listen to God. Bila kujali rangi yake, kabila yake, umri wake, taifa lake, maadam ni mali ya Mungu. Regardless of color or the nation, as long as he is a person of God. Kila anisikilizaye Mungu anasema, Whoever listens to me God says, atakaa salama. Will be safe. Maana yake duniani hakuna usalama. That means in the world there is no safety. Kuna magonjwa. There is sicknesses. Kuna vita. There is battles. Kuna njaa. There is hunger. Lakini kila atakaye amua kumsikiliza Mungu, Mungu anajiapisha kwamba atakaa salama. But whoever gonna decide to listen to God, God swear on himself say that person will be safe. Magonjwa yanaweza yakapita na yakamaliza watu, lakini kila anayemsikiliza Mungu atakaa salama. Sickness can pass and finish people, but whoever gonna listen to God will be safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tuna mtu mmoja katika Biblia. We have one person in the Bible ambaye anaitwa Isaka. That his name is Isaac. Wasomaji wa Biblia wanaelewa katika kitabu cha Mwanzo sura ya 26 kama siko sahihi. Bible readers understand this in the book of Genesis 26. Inasema kulikwepo na njaa kama njaa ile ambayo ilikwepo enzi ya Ibrahim. The Bible says there was a severe hunger like in the moment of Abraham's Isaka alipona njaa imezidi kipindi hicho wanaambiwa kule Misri ndio kuna chakula. Kwa hiyo akaenda kuomba vibali kwa mfalme ili na yeye akahemee chakula aweze kuletea watoto wake. So Isaac when he saw there is severe hunger in the country, he went and asked for the permission from the king for him to go to Egypt to able to bring food. Biblia nasema akapata hicho ikibali. The Bible say he got the favor for the king. Maana, kesho yake alikuwa anasafiri kwenda kuvuka mpaka aende nchi ya Misri. So that means on the following day he was going to cross the border to enter Egypt. Lengo kuna njaa na kule kuna chakula ili akanunue chakula alete watoto wake. The purpose is there was hunger and he wanted to buy food to bring for his family. Biblia nasema, The Bible says. Ilipofika usiku wakati amelala mtumishi wa Mungu Isaka. In the middle of the night when Isaac the servant of God was sleeping. Mungu akamtokea. God appeared to him. Akamwambia. And he told him. Kaa katika nchi hii usiende huko kaa hapa panda mbegu nami nitakubariki remain in the same country do not go to egypt uh, plant seeds and i will bless you bibi asema alipokubali kutii the bible say when he was willing and obey kumbuka kuna njaa remember there was hunger kumbuka kuna shida remember there was trouble lakini alipokubali kutii but once he was willing to to obey bibi anasema the bible says mwaka huo akapata vipimo kila moja kwa mia kwa mia kwa mia mpaka wale wa filisi waliokuwa wanamzunguka wakamuonea wivu wakamhusudu on that year when he listened to god and planted the seed the bible said he got 1 to 60 and 1 to 100 until the people that were surrounding him began to be jealous ina maana mungu anaposema that means once god speaks huwa na njia ya kumsaidia huyo muhusika it comes with a way to help the particular person amina amen alipomwambia kaa katika nchi na wakati tayari alikuwa anaenda kuhemea na kurudi anamzuia maana yake Mungu alikuwa na njia mbadala na kutoka hapo hatuoni Isaka akisema ana njaa bali tunakuja kuona matokeo baada ya kutii 
We see when God spoke with Isaac and told him, stay on the same country, do everything as God instructed him, he did. We don't see Isaac saying again he's in hunger, but we see the outcome of the obedience. Haya, Remember today declaration ni maneno ya Mungu, is the word of God ya kuwapa watoto wake au kanisa lake ufahamu wa kimungu. It's the word of God that comes to give his God's children the awareness or the understanding of God. Ndio maana anasema kila anisikilizaye atakaa salama. That's why he say everyone who gonna listen to me will be safe. Sema amina. Say amen. Maana yake jambo lolote Mungu analokupa anakupa na ufahamu wa kuelewa uweze kushinda kuliko pale ambapo ilikuwa bado hujaelewa. That means anything that God tells you it comes with awareness that gonna help you to understand and to overcome where you could not before. Amina. Amen. Watu wengi sana a lot of people wanaompenda Mungu na walimpenda Mungu. That loves God and used to love God na wakashinda kwenye maeneo mbalimbali ya sadaka ya utoaji wakashinda kabisa and they have victory towards offerings or any type of things in the life na wakampendeza Mungu and they, play, they pleased God lakini baadhi yao wakashindwa kuyatii maagizo ya Mungu but some of them they felt to listen to the instruction of God ina maana wengine walishinda wengine walishindwa That means some of them they hold the instruction and some of them they did not. Watu wengi sana a lot of people wanataka kukaa miaka mingi. They want to live long life. Wanataka kuishi vizuri. They want to live good life. Lakini hawataki kuitii sauti ya Mungu. But they don't want to obey the voice of God. Mungu huyu alioko juu mbinguni. The God who is in heaven. Gharama yake his cost ni kumsikiliza. Is only to listen. Ukimsikiliza and once you listen to him anasema utakaa salama he says you will be safe anasema kila anisikilizaye he say whoever gonna listen to me maana ke Mungu anatamani aseme na mtu that means god wish to speak to someone hata sasa napoongea na wewe matamko ya leo Mungu atasema na wewe even today declaration god gonna talk to you na Mungu anaposema na wewe and once god is talking to you anaachilia maarifa yake ndani ya ufahamu wako. He gonna release knowledge in your own awareness. Haleluya. Haleluya. Kitabu cha kumbukumbu la Torati sura ya 30. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. Na msari ule wa 11. Verse 11. Kwanza tukasoma mpaka hapo 12. Anasema kwa maana maagizo haya ni kwa gizayo leo si mazito mno kwako wala si mbali. Si mbinguni hata useme ni nani atakaye panda mbinguni atuletee na atuambie tusikie tupate kuyafanya wala si ngambo ya pili ya bahari hata useme ni nani atakaye vuka bahari akatuletee aje atuambie tusikie tupate kuyafanya lakini neno hili li karibu nawe sana katika kinywa chako na moyo wako upate kulifanya amina sasa ukisoma ule msari wa 19 As you read verse 19 Asema na shuhudia mbingu na nchi juu yenu hivi leo kuwa nimekuwekea mbele yako uzima na mauti baraka na laana basi chagua uzima kwa nini chagua uzima ili uwe hai wewe na uzao wako Anasema kumpenda Bwana Mungu wako kuitii sauti yake kushikamana naye kwani hiyo ndio uzima wako na wingi wa siku zako upate kukaa katika nchi Bwana aliyowapia baba zako Ibrahim, Isaka na Yakobo kuwa atawapa. Amina. Amen. Mungu mbinguni anahangaika sana namna ya kumpata mwanadamu atakaye msikiliza. God in heaven he's looking forward on how to capture a human being that gonna listen to him wanadamu chini ya jua human being under the sun wanahangaika sana kuangalia matatizo yao they struggle on focusing on their troubles mungu mbinguni god in heaven anajua watu wana matatizo wana mateso wana njaa wana vifungo god knows that people have troubles have cars and have troubles in their lives lakini anaangalia nani atakaye msikiliza nani atakaye mtafuta amsikilize amsikizishe sauti yake but he's looking to see who gonna listen to him for him to talk to that person hallelujah hallelujah maana anasema nimekuwekea mbele yako uzima na laana baraka na mauti because he say i've put it before you life and death blessing and curse alafu anakuambia 
Chagua uzima. And he tell you choose life. Chagua uzima, alafu anakuambia mstari wa 24 uzima ni wa namna gani? Mstari wa 20 anaeleza juu ya uzima ni nini? 20 he explain about life what is the meaning Anasema kumpenda bwana Mungu wako He says to love your Lord God Kuitii sauti yake To obey his voice Na kushikamana naye And to hold him Anaposema kumpenda bwana Mungu wako When he say to love your Lord God Watu wengi wanampenda Mungu Most people do so Anaposema kuitii sauti yake When he say obey his voice Ni lazima Mungu aje aseme na mtu God must come and speak to someone Kama hajasema na mtu he, If he haven't speak to someone Hata ukichomwa mchongomo unaweza kufa Even if you just poked by an apoc you be da- you can die Mangapi wanaelewa kitu nasema How many people understand Hata ukingatwa na mbwa tu unaweza kufa You can just be bitten by a dog and you can die Hata ukingatwa na mbwa unaweza kufa You can just be bitten by a mosquito Kile Biblia nasema But the Bible says Hao watu watakuwa wananipenda Those people loves God Anasema kumpenda bwana Mungu wako. He say to love your Lord God. Na kuitii sauti yake. And to obey his voice. Maana yake kuna kitu ataongea na wewe. That means there is something he gonna talk to you. Kitakachopelekea utii. That gonna cause you to obey. Anasema kisha kushikamana naye. Then say then hold him firmly. Hata kama una dini yangu na dini yako. Even if you have your own religion and my own. Lakini Mungu anataka ushikamane naye. But God wants you to hold him. Maana unamsikiliza yeye. Because you listen to him. Kutoka hapo. From then hata kama kuna mlima mrefu even if there is a tall mountain maisha yako yatabadilika your life gonna change hata kama kuna mlima mrefu even if there is a mountain uzee wako utakuwa mwema your old age gonna be good anasema he says ndipo utakaa miaka mingi then you gonna live many years miaka ya uzima years of life hallelujah hallelujah 